Hello everyone, welcome, John here. Today's video is the first in a short mini series on Selenium and Python. Uh, what Selenium is, it is a way that we can control our browsers using our code. Uh, it's generally used for uh, testing, um, but it does do other things and we're going to look into those as well. So this is the first video and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting it installed, uh, taking a look at the web driver, opening pages, uh, filling out forms and looking at the wait function. Uh, it does a lot more, but we'll get stuck into that in later videos, including web scraping. So the first thing that we need to do is always check out the documentation. It's the best place to start. Uh, and here we can see that we've got some demo code. Um, the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you've got Selenium installed. So that would always be a pip install. So do pip install Selenium. Uh, I always do dash dash user to uh, install it for my separate user account only. The second thing we need to do is we need to install the web driver. Um, now there's two main web driver ones that I use. Uh, one is called Gecko driver and that is for Firefox and the other one is the Chrome driver for Chrome. Uh, there's two things that you need to make sure uh, before you do this is you make sure that you have the browser that is respective to that driver installed. So if you have the Gecko driver and you want to use that you must have Firefox installed otherwise you're not going to get anywhere and the same with Chrome. The second thing is to make sure that the web driver that you download works with the version of the browser that you are using. So check the, ver the version of the browser by looking at the about page or whatever and making sure you get the one that works with that. So if we go back to the docs and have a quick look at what it says about the web driver, we can see that here it says the web driver is a browser natively as a user would either locally or on your own machine using the Selenium server. So we need to make sure that we have the web driver installed as appropriate to our browser version as I just mentioned. So if we go back to the main page and we click here on the Selenium web driver button we can see right away it tells you what languages it supports etc etc et et and down here it says browsers and this is the ones I was talking about here Firefox and the Gecko driver and Chrome and Chrome driver. So please go onto the documentation and download whichever one is appropriate to you. If you're a Linux user check under your package manager and one might be in there for you that would be nice and easy to install. If not you can follow the downloads and you can download it that way. It's basically just an executable file that needs to be in your path uh, to be able to control the browser. So once you've got it downloaded and you've got Selenium installed, we can go to our uh, Python scripts and we can check that everything's working. So now that we've got the Chrome driver or the Gecko driver downloaded and saved on our system and we've got Selenium installed using pip, uh, we need to go to our Python scripts, our py file uh, and test to see that it works. So to do that I will do, let's make this bigger so you can see, from selenium import web driver like this. We save that and if we run that we get no errors we can see right here that means that's working. The next thing we want to do is we need to set our uh, web driver that we've just imported so I would always call it driver so we know what we're looking at. It's equal to web driver dot and in this case, I am going to use Chrome, dot Chrome, just like that. And what that's going to do is it's going to initialize the, the Chrome browser and open it up. So if we run that now, we should get a Chrome browser open. Here we go. If everything's worked properly at this stage, you'll see that it says Chrome is being controlled by automated test software. And it's opened this, and then nothing has happened. If you've managed to get this far, then everything's working fine. If you're having problems with the web driver not being in the correct path, uh, the, the default path for Linux is in here. Let's get this on the screen and it is, that's the default and that should be the same for Mac. For Windows it might be a bit difficult, a bit more uh, in depth. There are other guides out there but one thing you can do is you can put it directly into here. So you could do C and then double backslash for Windows paths and then type the path to your driver here. So if it was in your C drive you could just do something like this and that should work for you. Okay so now we want to make it so that it opens up a URL for us. So if we set a URL here and we'll just do google.com like so. What we'd want to do is we need to do driver.get and then our URL. What this is going to do is it's going to go to this page for us. We open that up. 
can see it's taken us to the Google Home page. Now other things that we might want to do uh, is perhaps fill out forms or click buttons or something like that. To demonstrate that I'm going to use the same uh, dummy login page that I used before and the URL for that is this one right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to double check that our page opens up that URL correctly for us and I'll explain how to uh, work out how to get it to put data in for you. So now we've got this our page open here we can see that we have two fields uh, and a username and password. Um, again we're going to need to use the inspect element function because we're going to be looking to find out the name or the ID of these form fields so we can input data into them. So if we right click in here and go inspect you can see that go here we've got the field here. Now it has got a name and an ID but I prefer to use the XPath or CrossPath and that you can find here by going copy and copy XPath like that. So I'm just going to put that into our script there so we know what that is and the same again for the password copy there put that in and also we're going to need to be able to click on this button here so I'm going to find out where the button is now this looks to me just, just like, like it's the, the class for the um, text or something like that but I think this is the button here see it says button class so again same thing great now we've got that saved there I'm going to close this now so we can get working here. There's one other thing that we need to, to import from the Selenium library if we want to be able to input keystrokes into our fields, i.e. our text data. Uh, so that's from selenium uh, dot web driver common dot keys. It's quite long winded but you just copy and paste most of the time. Import keys. Now what this will let us do is it will, that should be a capital I think, There we go. This will let us input our characters in. So now what do we need to do to get our form filled out? Well, we know that the paths of the boxes and the button to click on. So we need to find those. We need to tell the driver to find those. And to do that, we would do driver.find element by xpath like this. Now what that means is it's going to use the xpath to find this on the on the web page. You can do it by ID, you can do it by CSS selector. Have a look on the Selenium docs to see which one will work best for you. I tend to go for this because I just find it easier. So we know that the first one was the username, so let's put that in there. And now the same again, but for the password. And let's put the password in there, like this. And then we're gonna need to find the button again, so same for that, but it was login button like this. Okay, so now when now our Selenium is going to find these elements on the page, but we need to tell it to do something with them. So we can do dot send underscore keys, and what this will do is we'll send the keys that we type in after this to this form. And I know that the um, username for this is Tom Smith, and the same for this, which is super secret password like that. Let's make that a bit smaller. There we go. Uh, and to click on a button it's just simply dot click like this. So hopefully we need to put this above here so we get the URL before we try and find elements that aren't on the page. So hopefully when we run this it's going to click on put the text in the keys and click on the button for us. And there we go, it's logged in. So what we've successfully done is we've opened up the browser automatically with our code. We've sent in, uh, we've sent keystrokes to both of the form fields and we've clicked on the login button it's got us to the next page. That's really useful. We could log into loads of different websites this way, um, we can test forms etc etc. One other thing that you might find useful uh, is to close the browser once you're done and we'll do that with driver.quit like this. Now this is going to flash by real quick if I just run it again because it's going to log us in and it's going to close the browser logged in and done again. Another thing that we'll find useful is to use Selenium to load dynamic content for us so we can access it. Um, this could be text or something loaded by JavaScript that we can't scrape the normal way. I'm going to go a bit more into web scraping in the next video in this series but right now I just want to show you how you can use the wait function in Selenium to wait until an element is loaded. So I'm going to clear this 
a little bit out here, keep that the same, and I'm going to change the URL again to this website, but with a different page, it's a dynamic loading page. So if we open this up, I'll show you what it looks like. You can see now that we have, when it gets going, oh, that's because I haven't driver.get URL. If you don't tell it to go somewhere, it won't do anything. So now we've gone to this website, you can see we've got a button that is click, you click on and then after a short loading screen, it will load up some text. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did before and I'm going to find the path of this button. So if I click on this here, we can see button. So let's copy the path again because we want to click on this button. So now we're going to put that there. So when we actually click on this button and get the loading screen, the information that comes afterwards as well, we want that. Right, here we are. So now this is loaded up in our browser, we can see that this text is here. So we want to get this as well, because we want to tell Selenium to wait until this, um, this has popped up before we do the next thing. So if I put this in here, so we've got that there as well. Okay, let's, let's close that. So what we want to do is to do again driver.find element by path and we know that this was our button here and as before we want to click on this button dot click like so and then driver find Find element by path and the text here and because we want the text of that we just do dot text at the end and we'll store that in uh, text variable and then print the text at the end. So if we run this now, we're going to get an error as you'll see because it's going to click on this button and it's going to immediately look for this element which isn't there because it hasn't been loaded up yet. If I move this you'll see the error. Okay there we go, we got the error even though it's still working but we got the error stopping our code. Now to do a wait we have to import a few more things so we need to import Selenium Web Driver Support UI Import Web Driver Wait with a T on the end. So in between these two pieces of code, we want to put our wait. So it waits to find this element before it, before our code ends. Uh, there are two different types of wait, and the one we're going to be looking at is a wait uh, is an implicit wait, which basically means that it's going to keep polling until it finds that element that within the allotted within the time we've given it. Um, I find that this is the best one to use for this sort of example so we want to do driver dot implicitly can I spell wait and we'll give it a, a 10 seconds so what that's going to do is going to wait 10 seconds for this to for it to find this element which is plenty of time so now if we run it we should hopefully get our text value out because it's going to wait for it see we've got no errors it's waiting it's waiting it's waiting and as soon as this pops up it finds the element that we were looking for and we've got our hello world out here. What we've done in this is that we've um, used Selenium to load up some dynamic data, called a little wait for it to wait to find the element which was behind a click and then got that information out. So hopefully you found this this video useful, um, get you going with Selenium. Uh, so go out there and try and open up some web pages. Um, let me know if you've got any cool uses for this. I'd like to hear that uh, and don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more. The part two and three will be coming shortly. We're going to be looking at doing some more web scraping with Selenium and then part three we're going to be looking at running Selenium headlessly on a Linux server which is a really cool thing. Cheers guys, bye.